In this video, I'll show you how to use a slide switch with an Arduino. A slide switch holds its position when you toggle it. This is in contrast to push buttons, which we cover in an earlier video in our Arduino tutorial series. These buttons are spring-loaded, so they pop back up after you release them. These are two very common digital inputs used with an Arduino to let you accomplish pretty much the same thing, but you might want to select one or the other depending on the interface you're designing. Before we look at the circuit and the code, let's zoom in and take a look at the physical switch. If we look at it from the side here, you can see we have a plastic case with three pins on the bottom and then the sliding switch on the top. The middle of these three pins is always connected to one of the two outer pins depending on which position, position the switch is in. So when it is down in this position, then the middle pin is going to be connected to this outer pin, and when I slide it up into that position, then the middle pin is connected to this outer pin. And while the middle pin is connected to one of the outer pins, the other outer pin is just not connected to anything at all. Technically, this is called a single pole double throw, or SPDT switch, because we have a single pole, or that pin in the middle, and two or double throw positions to connect to those two different outer pins. There are other types of switches, like single pole, single throw, but we are not going to cover all of those in this video. We're just going to talk about this common type of slide switch. To take a look at the wiring on a breadboard, we are going to switch over to Tinkercad Circuits, which is a free online Arduino simulator. We have a tutorial about using Tinkercad Circuits in our Arduino playlist, linked in the description of this video. The circuit here is very simple. We have an LED connected to Arduino pin 8 with a 220 ohm current limiting resistor to ground. If you aren't sure how to control LEDs with an Arduino, again, we cover that early in our Arduino tutorial series. We then have the switch, which has three pins. Each of those pins needs to go in a separate row of the breadboard. If you put your switch like this, so all three pins are in the same row of the breadboard, then you are short-circuiting all three pins together and your switch will not work properly. So it is important to make sure the switch is oriented like this with each pin in its own row. You are then going to wire the middle pin of the switch to an Arduino pin of your choice and the outer two pins to 5 volts and ground from your Arduino respectively. So make sure you are properly connected from your Arduino's power pins to your breadboard's power buses. And then it doesn't technically matter which of the two outer pins you connect to 5 volts and which one you connect to ground. Reversing them will just reverse the switch's behavior. But what this will do is when I toggle the switch up to this position, it's going to connect the middle pin to this row on the breadboard via the internal connection on the switch, which will then be connected to 5 volts. So my input will be 5 volts. When I toggle the switch down the other way, then this row on the breadboard will be connected to this row on the breadboard via the switch, which will be connected to ground, so my input will be zero volts. We can see that here if I connect a multimeter to measure the voltage of the center pin in Tinkercad, that again, when the switch is toggled up to this position, I am getting five volts on the center pin, and when I toggle the switch down to the lower position, I'm getting zero volts. One quick note before we take a look at the code, you might have noticed that there is no external resistor required to use the switch. Unlike a button, which requires a pull-up or pull-down resistor to prevent the input voltage from floating when the button is not pushed, we cover that in more detail in our video about buttons, since the switch has three pins and one of them is always connected to 5 volts, one of them is always connected to ground, and the middle pin is always connected to one of those two pins, at least for this type of switch, the middle pin can never be floating or not connected to anything, so you don't have to worry about a floating input, and you don't need a pull-up or pull-down resistor when using the switch. The code we will use to control the LED with the switch is pretty much identical to the code you would use to control the LED with a button. Again, the physical difference is that the switch will hold its position when toggled, so the LED will stay on or off, as opposed to the button, which is spring-loaded, so you have to hold it down to keep the LED on, and then when you release the button, the LED will turn off. Looking at the code, we declare a few variables, two for the pins we are using, the LED on pin eight and the switch on pin two, and then one for the state of the switch, which can be either on or off. Then in the setup function, we use the pin mode command to set the LED pin as an output, 
and a switch pin as an input. In the loop function, we use the digital read command to read the state of the switch pin, and then we use an if else statement to turn the LED on or off depending on the state of the switch. So as you can see, when I run the simulation, if the switch is down, which we saw earlier when I had the multimeter connection means the input will be low or zero volts, then the LED is off. And when I toggle the switch to the on position, the LED turns on. Now you might be thinking, wait a minute, if all I want to do is turn an LED on or off, then why do I need an Arduino at all? Can I just do that with the switch? So if literally all you want to do is power something on or off and you don't need any more complicated code, you don't have any other sensors or motors or other things going on that you would need to do with a program, then you are correct. You can just use one of these as a simple on off switch. You can do that by wiring the switch in series with your load or whatever you want to control and your power supply. So in this case, I'm going to delete the wire that was controlling the LED with one of the Arduino's digital pins and just wire the switch in series with the LED and the Arduino's five volt supply. I can do that by taking a wire from the five volt supply to the switch's middle pin, running one of the outer pins to the LED and leaving the other pin disconnected. So now when I start the simulation, I have a path for current to flow through the breadboard, through the switch, through this jumper wire, through the LED and back to ground. If I toggle the switch to the other position, this row of the breadboard is now not connected to the center pin, so the LED is not receiving power and it will turn off. So again, that functions as a simple on off switch with no software or code required. But if you want to do something more complicated and not just on off behavior, that's when the Arduino and the code will come in handy. We hope you found this video useful. For many other Arduino tutorials and cool science projects you can do with an Arduino, check out the rest of our YouTube channel. And for over a thousand other projects you can do in all areas of science and engineering, visit our website, www.sciencebuddies.org.